Right, so let's talk about the conscious use of language next. We're on page 81. It says that the desired outcome of the language section is for all participants to be able to successfully use language to produce their desired results using language by chunking up or down to levels of greater ambiguity or specificity. And we're going to learn a number of techniques that's going to be able to help us to do that. Now in the process of doing that, I could use specificity or ambiguity in language. We'll be learning about the Milton model, the Meta model, as well as chunking up and chunking down. I could use hypnotic language patterns. I could use the agreement frame. Now the agreement frame is a wonderful frame. And I would use, I appreciate and, or... I respect and or I agree and or I could use a combination of those together but I would like to avoid the word but and understand so this is what we mean by this you see sometimes we have a conversation with somebody else and when I say Yes, I understand, but, well, that kind of suggests that you don't understand. That but almost makes you feel like a but. You know, if somebody says to you, yes, but, then it's like that everything beforehand has just been negated. It doesn't mean anything. So, it's okay for people to have different points of view. And so the agreement frame is useful to express your point of view while still maintaining agreement and not being confrontive. So somebody could say something, I could say, I appreciate your point of view, and then you can also add your bit. Or, I respect your point of view, and add whatever you need to add. Or, I agree that is one option and yeah are some other options now I could like I said I could use this in any one of those or combination of one day I had to pick up some manuals that had been sent overnight via delivery company and I had to pick it up from the office it was around seven o'clock in the morning and they actually opened you open up around half past eight or nine so I was definitely there way before obviously they were opening and so as I pulled up to them I could see through the glass doors that there was a lady sitting inside and I knocked on the door and she showed on her watch to say no they were closed and I made sort of the praying begging please just come to the door move and when she came to the door she very very in fact she cracked the door so small that probably it could still be locked that's how small the gap was in the door and I said to her something like I appreciate that it's before your opening hours and I totally respect that you now have the option to please give me my manuals I have the receipt and tracking number here and I passed it straight to the door for her in expectation and congruently that she would then give me the manuals to which she did now in that case I wasn't disagreeing she wasn't putting another point across I was just utilizing it in such a way knowing that I was in the wrong and so I used the words I appreciate and I respect and stating my case and she actually gave me the manuals so it was just another way of using the agreement frame the purpose frame for the most part we said in NLP and coaching we want to avoid the word why because why can come across confrontive or judgmental uh, sometimes a little bit in your face so if I use the words for what purpose it's like asking why, but in a nicer way. So what is the purpose for doing that? Rather than, why are you doing that? I could also use the what if frame. 
So what would happen if maybe the client says, I don't have enough time or I don't have enough money. And I could say, well, what would happen if you had all the time that you needed? What would happen if money was not an issue? What would happen if? And so that allows the client, it allows them to be more creative and actually then come up with solutions to whatever the potential problem might be. And so it's just that it helps to think from a different point of view. I could use words that create a positive internal representation. Remember, we want to say it the way that we want it. So instead of saying, don't be confused, I would say to the client, please understand. Instead of the client saying, or me saying, I don't want to be poor, I'd rather say, I want to be wealthy. So remember, we want to change that internal representation that we have inside of our head. Example, if it was an image, the image of don't be confused versus please understand might be two totally different images for that client. So we want to change the internal representation. Remember, say it the way that you want it. I could use a conditional close, which of course we use in sales all the time. Example, so if we did this, would you do this or would you do that? If we had it in blue, would you place the order now? If I was able to give you five coaching sessions for the price of six, will you place the order now? If I was able to help you double your turnover, do you see the value in proceeding with the coaching agreement? I could also use a tag question. Now, tag question is great because it displaces resistance. And so we just use the tag question at the end of a sentence. Example, this is something that you're interested in, isn't it? You've heard that before, haven't you? You know how to use those, don't you? So we use tag questions quite a lot. Now, there's also some additional frames that I can use. Remember, a frame in NLP is used to refer to a way of looking at things, roughly equivalent to a frame of reference in everyday English. A particular frame determines what we focus our attention on, so the things that are inside the frame, or what we ignore, so everything else that's outside the frame, for as long as we use it. Another way of looking at frames in NLP is as lenses that magnify certain information that we're interested in and filter out other information. There are a number of generally recognized frames in NLP that we've adapted because they're useful in getting results in particular contexts. And how we frame events or actions, the context against which we set them will determine what they mean to us. So the information that we consider and how we feel about the situation. So here's just some of the frames. An outcome frame. So this is about evaluating in the light of the outcomes that you've set. These outcomes should, of course, be well-formed. This gives you a firm basis to evaluate each event. Does it help you to achieve your desired outcome or take you further from it? The ecology frame. So what will be the effect or the action on the larger system of which we are part of? So what will be the impact on the client, their family, society, and the planet as a whole? Does it respect your integrity as a human being and the integrity of others that are involved? If you feel incongruent about the proposed action, this is usually a sign that you need to pay attention to the ecology. The as-if frame. So what would happen if some element of the situation were different? This is a way of exploring possibilities for creative problem solving. So imagine as if you've already achieved your goal. How did you achieve it? Where will you be in six months from now? And how did you get there? What is the worst thing that could happen? And how would you handle it? This is the base of contingency planning, computer system testing, science fiction. You can also use the as a frame with a group to get them in the same frame of mind as if 
they had already achieved the outcome. By asking them what the outcome will look like, what will they see, what will they hear, what will they feel, you know, what effects will it have on them? This will help them to believe in the outcome and feel more motivated to act. Next, we have the backtrack frame. So with the backtrack frame, what we're doing is we are restating what has already been said in the other person's key words and tonality. This checks the agreement and understanding of what's being said, and it helps us to build rapport. So it's useful to welcome new people to a meeting. It's also very useful to backtrack to the last point of agreement when a meeting gets stuck. So I'm, I can actually use this in a number of ways. I can backtrack and say, okay, clients are what I'm hearing you say, and I'm summarizing using their keywords and their tonalities, allowing me to check that I understand what they're saying, also to get the agreement. It also gives them the opportunity maybe to change what they were saying, because what they meant to say wasn't quite what came out their mouth. It also So it helps to build rapport. It's useful to welcome new people to the meeting, because we can say, okay, so this is what we've discussed, and we're now introducing them to the meeting. And it's also useful to backtrack to the last point of agreement or, you know, when a meeting gets stuck. So we got up to here and this is, we agreed about this and now let's move forward. Next, we've got the relevancy frame. If a participant in a meeting speaks or acts in a way that is irrelevant to the agenda or the desired outcome, I can ask the question, how is that relevant? So let's say that you're in a business meeting and all of a sudden you know two people start talking about facebook or what they were doing on the weekend then as the sales manager i can say so how is that relevant to helping us achieve our sales targets and it just brings it back onto track the contrast frame there's two uses for the contrast frame so contrasting a desired outcome with the present situation or an alternative this puts the outcome in, a more, in more perspective and makes more choices available. In selling and persuasion, you can contrast one choice with another to put your favorite in a better light. Example, contrasting cost of coaching with the return on investment. The evidence frame. How will you know when you have it? So what will be the evidence procedure? What will you see, hear, feel, etc.? How will you know that you have this? And the appreciative frame, well, although the appreciative frame is not really traditional NLP, it's pretty useful. So to use the appreciative frame, look at any problem, the situation or outcome, in terms of what is currently working well and what you're grateful for. And this gives us an opportunity to reassess resources and also seeds of solution that might otherwise have been forgotten. It raises morale and gives a sound platform for moving towards your current outcome. So the, those are just some additional frames that we can use as well. So let's move on and let's look deeper into the language section.